Hello, Toastmasters. Let me start my speech with a little anecdote. I was on the bus last week and I was sitting in the back and there was a woman in the front of the bus with four kids. Some of them were pretty young. They were like four or five years old. And the kids, the young kids came and sat in the back of the bus with me. And we were the only people on the bus, the lady, the kids, and me. And I felt a little bit uncomfortable because I've been a, an educator before, an early childhood educator, and I realized there's all sorts of legal obligations that come with being in a space with kids, especially someone else's kids. And so what I did was I went to the front of the bus and I sat kind of near where this lady was. And the way the bus was organized, uh, this was the only other place to sit. So she's looking at me. She kind of looks up and just goes back to what she's doing. And she is just totally immersed in her cell phone. And she has no idea what her kids are doing. Um, and so it made me think about parenting nowadays and how a lot of parents are just immersed in their cell phones. And maybe some of them use cell phone apps to kind of help to moderate their children. Uh, and it made me worry about childhood education and parents getting the kind of information they need to become parents. As many people have said, including Hillary Clinton, uh, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. But honestly, nowadays, we can't always rely on this village being there. And... What if your cell phone battery runs out? And it made me think that perhaps in high school, we need to implement a class for all students in America, a parenting class. We already have sex ed. We already have driver's ed. We already have civic education. It's just going to be another one of those required classes. And I think it will really help us to fill a gap in terms of our information transmission between generations for several reasons. The first one is the one that I already mentioned. We are becoming increasingly individualistic and centered on our cell phones and our computers. And being a parent requires some kind of interaction at some level. A second reason is maybe in the past, pop culture and the media has kind of helped to bridge the gap, the information gap about parenting and how to do it. But we can't always rely on that anymore because our media is so diversified. It's incredible. A third reason is today in schools, a lot of times parents and teachers, they get wrapped up in discussions about gender. It's the hot issue. But I think this is distracting us from some core ideas about what it means to be a good parent and raise a child who can become a productive member of society based on their skills and their personalities. A fourth reason would be uh, just the types of communication that that we relied on for, for our development of, as humans in a community. It's not always there anymore. So a parenting class might help us to develop some of the vocabularies we need to initiate these kind of dialogues between our children, ourselves, our administrators, and humans as a developing species in America. I think our country ha needs this more than other countries because we are so intensely focused on our cell phones and our screens these days. What would this class look like? That's a good question. Well, one of my friends in college once told me that he had this whole list of, of things that, you know, he wanted to do with his kids when he had a family compared to, you know, what his parents did with him. And this totally surprised me because both of his parents were very successful professionals. And my friend was also a very successful student who went on to become a, a successful professional. And so, you know, he said, you know, I, I wish, you know, X, Y, and Z. And it made me think about probably a lot of people in high school could benefit from 
looking at their experience as children, which is kind of not too far in the past if you're only in high school, and reflecting on that. You know, what did your parents do well? What did you wish they did better? And maybe educators could give you also some theory about, you know, what are some parenting paradigms that maybe you'd never even thought about? And being in a school, you'd have the opportunity to have individual reflection, group discussion, and maybe a teacher sometimes jumping in to give you some information. But I think probably the teacher would have to be very careful to take a more informative and less preachy and pedantic approach to this kind of class. One reason for that is we don't want to create cookie cutter children. Another reason is our children are going to face questions about parenting that we probably never even thought of, that we are only seeing on the horizon. And having this class will give them some background, some information, so that they can have intelligent discussions amongst themselves as part of a political dialogue, part of community dialogue, in order to approach these problems. And even though our theoretical educators and scientists will probably already know the answers, when this kind of theory filters down to the populace, we want to give them some kind of vocabulary that they can assimilate this kind of thing with. Educators already get a lot of backgrounds. K, K through 12 educators already get a lot of background in childhood development, theories of personality, psychology, blah, blah, blah. And what we need to do is kind of distill this into a format that takes care of the parenting side of bringing up a child. The thing is that maybe educator and parenting roles are gonna to start to overlap a little bit in this kind of environment. But we need to remember that parents have all kinds of financial concerns that they have to deal with that maybe an educator doesn't. In conclusion, I just wanna say that, you know, even if you don't have children, chances are your, your friends are gonna have children, maybe your siblings are gonna have children or you're just gonna be on the bus or in the park with kids one day. And it will help you to understand those people that you come into contact with. This will also help you to, these people reflecting on their childhood experiences will also be better prepared to become adults by having reflected on how their childhood is impacting their psychology. And what if your phone battery runs out and you're a parent? You want to have some strategies in your toolkit in order to maybe chat with your child at, at a face-to-face -face interaction in person without the cell phone mediation. Do you know what you're going to say? Thank you.